Good evening, and thank you for joining our virtual public meeting regarding CTC redevelopment. I'm Logan Lover, the Senior Public Information Specialist for CATS. Our Planning Director, Jason Lawrence, will give a presentation, and we'll follow that with a Q&A. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the chat, and we will address those at the end of Jason's presentation. Excellent. Thank, thank you, uh, Logan. Appreciate the introduction. As she stated, I'm Jason Lawrence. I'm the Director of Planning with Charlotte Area Transit System. And today I'm going to give you an update on the proposed redevelopment of the Charlotte Transportation Center. Uh, this is the second in a series of public meetings that we're holding. We had an earlier session today at noon, and then tonight we're meeting with you all. And then on Thursday, uh, following our Transit Services uh, Advisory Committee meeting, we're having an in-person meeting on this same topic at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Government Center in room 280. Next week, we'll be at the Charlotte Transportation Center to get feedback directly on the design options that we'll be viewing with you all tonight. What we'll go over this evening is the transit and land use vision that CATS and Charlotte has been working on for, for over 20 years. Some information about the past and the present and future of the, of the CTC. And I'll, I will be saying CTC a lot tonight. That's short for Charlotte Transportation Center. I'll go in detail about the public-private opportunity, our mobility goals in a new center, the evaluation and refinement of the various options that are under consideration. We'll talk about the public outreach and stakeholder engagement and then wrap up with some next steps. This project uh, is in the very early stages. Uh, this began in a conversation through an unsolicited proposal that I'll go into detail uh, in, a, in a few slides. But we, as you can see here on, on the, the timeline, we're, we are at the evaluation phase and we're in the public input phase. And so it's important for us uh, to hear from the public, to understand uh, what people want out of a new transit center uh, and what kind of amenities and other types of uh, passenger experience uh, features that they want to see. Uh, I'll make a note that you know, there is a uh, independent assessment from a city consultant team, and that we'll go into that uh, evaluation tonight through some of the information. Uh, with the timeline set out here, uh, the new transportation center could open later part of this decade. But if we go back and you know, talk about that transit and land use vision just for a minute, uh, in the early 90s, there was a conversation around growth in, in the Charlotte region that was called the Centers and Corridors. And that led to the 2025 Transit and Land Use Plan that was put in front of Mecklenburg County voters for a sales tax in 1998 that was approved and adopted by the voters and has paid for the operating and the capital improvements of, of what we see today in the CATS system, the Lynx Blue Line, the City Lynx Gold Line, are all a part of a, of a conversation about growth, but also about land use and how transit needs to be integrated with that. And today, transit and the CATS vision is not only integrated within land use, but it's also incorporated in many strategic initiatives that the city has taken on. The 2040 Comprehensive Plan, Strategic Mobility Plan that, that was just recently adopted by, by Charlotte City Council. A, transit is key to the uh, increasing of, of mode share within the city of Charlotte limits. So getting people to use other modes other than just car but riding by themselves. So like bikes, pedestrian, and transit is key to that uh, strategy. We're also incorporated in the Unified Development Ordinance. And as we are uh, moving towards electrifying our fleet, we have 18 buses that will be piloting in the electric state to understand how can we can electrify, uh, go to zero emissions for our entire fleet. And that's why it's a key strategy of the Strategic Energy Action Plan also adopted by Charlotte City Council. And for CATS, our guiding documents now are two maps, essentially, adopted by the Metropolitan Transit Commission. One is the 2030 Transit System Plan. That's our rapid transit system plan, the five corridors of light rail and commuter rail and bus rapid transit and streetcar throughout Mecklenburg County. And then most recently adopted in May of this year by the Metropolitan Transit Commission, the Envision My Ride vision plan for high frequency corridors of bus routes throughout our system, mobility hubs, that are also serving micro transit on demand zones. This is the vision that we're moving towards on, on our bus side. These two plans work very comprehensively together. And there's building upon that vision and conversations with the region as a whole, as we look to build out and, and implement a regional vision of incorporated transit called Connect Beyond, uh, 12, state, uh, 12 counties in two states of high capacity transit and interconnected bus services across the broader region. It will be built upon the foundation of CATS efforts in Mecklenburg County. 
We're going to focus tonight on the bus piece of that vision, the Envision My Ride, which is simply put, how do we build a better net bus network through high frequency corridors, better improvements at the bus stops to make the passenger experience more enjoyable, but also having right sizing our fleet to have high frequency routes on our key corridors like Central Avenue and Providence Road. But how do we convert most of our 60 minute routes to more on demand and more micro transit types of services? That's key to our vision as we seek to meet the future and the expectations that people have today with mobility. As at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do with all the plans and strategies laid in front is build that connected network of having frequent transit that's, that's fast and reliable, but also connects us to our trails and greenways that en enables driving and ride share and micro transit to connect at mobility hubs. But then we're also thinking about how bike, scooter share and pedestrian connections are incorporated in a total mobility framework and how can transit be a part of that broader mobility ecosystem. And so key to that ecosystem and key to the, that connected network really does come together at the Charlotte Transportation Center. It is at the intersection of two major uh, projects, federally funded projects, the Lynx Blue Line opened in 2007, the Lynx Blue Line extension in 2018, City Lynx Gold Line in two phases, 2015 and 2021. Those two projects come together at the Charlotte Transportation Center. So that site will still be key in our strategy of improving mobility throughout the region. Now that site has been there for, for 27 years. It opened in 1995. And at its time, it was solving a problem of, of passenger transfer that it used to occur in an open air facility at the Trade and Tryon Square in Uptown Charlotte. Very little shelter from, from the elements. And so as we wanted to improve the passenger experience, we entered into a public-private partnership for the Nations Bank at that time, now Bank of America, to build a single point of transfer for our bus customers in a covered facility. So at that time, solving that problem just to create better coverage for our uh, passengers, but also to consolidate our transfer into a single point. And why is it important to still continue to have a single point of, of mobility in our uptown area? If you see the, the screen in front of you, you know up, there's tremendous growth, growth and employment throughout our, our region, but still uptown Charlotte has by and large the most employment in our region, but also the highest level of density at just under 50,000 employees by, in, by square mile in Uptown. So from a transit standpoint, that's a key destination that we need to continue to serve uh, with a mobility hub at the intersection of the Blue Line and the Gold Line. So as we look to build a new transit center, what are the problems that we need to solve today in 2022 versus what we were trying to solve in 1995? We're a much more active Uptown, much more modes of mobility. And so there are a lot of pedestrian conflicts and too many curb cuts along Trey Street and 4th Street to meet the mobility expectations of today. Inside the transit center, you have to cross multiple lanes of bus travel to complete your transfer inside the center. So many more conflicts are occurring there. Uh, small unconditioned passenger spaces. There are climate control, you know, air conditioned heated spaces within the transit center, as you can see on the right hand side of the image. But by and large, most of our customers do wait for the bus at their uh, transfer point, what, what we call bus bays. And so how do we create more of that climate controlled experience so that when it's hot outside or cold, it, that it would not be affecting our bus passengers because we would want to design a new facility with more climate controlled space. So poor connections to the blue line and gold line, we do have those connections today. You, know, you cross the street to gold line, the blue line connection at the current CTC was in a sense retrofitted to make this connection work as you see on the images there. In a new facility, in a mixed use development, it'll be important to make sure how do we make that vertical uh, connection more seamless and more intuitive than it is today. And ultimately, as we go back to the transit and land use connection, there's no active street fringes on Brevard Street. So in a new facility in, incorporated with a mixed use development, we really have the opportunity to create a more active street frontage on Brevard Street. What also has changed since, since the, the mid 90s, like mobility expectations have changed and the needs for mobility. The blue line wasn't built when the, the CTC opened in 95. Electrification of our fleet, 
uh, mobile apps like our own Cats Pass app or ride sharing apps like Lyft and Uber, people's expectations of what mobility needs are have certainly changed. And so the challenge and opportunity with a new facility is to meet those new mobility expectations and needs. So as we set out to build uh, and incorporate a new transit mobility hub, we have a series of goals that we need to meet. We'll need continuity of service in a temporary facility. We want to elevate the transit rider experience by creating more climate controlled space. Safety and security are top priorities. So we want to control the access to the transit space so that you need a ticket to enter where you transfer to your bus, but also you know everybody around you also is there to just do that transfer to a bus. We wanna minimize those pedestrian vehicle conflicts make those connections between all the modes of transit there more seamless, and an opportunity to create more sustainable design through lead certification or envision certification, and make this a place that where we can also charge our buses and integrate that within a mixed use development to create an active, vibrant place in our uptown area. So we were faced with a really unique opportunity back in 2019. We were approached by a Greensboro uh, developer through what we call an unsolicited proposal to redevelop the Trent Charlotte Transportation Center into a mixed use development through federally through, through a, uh, a formal request for proposals that we issued in June of 2019. We received three proposals and through a competitive process, we selected the joint venture partnership of Charlotte based White Point Partners and Dart Interests, a Dallas real estate investment firm to move forward in the conversation of how to incorporate a transit center in a mixed use development. And key to the White Point's proposal, they controlled land across the street uh, at the corner of 4th and Bavard. So we had a ready opportunity to relocate a temporary transit center uh, while this facility is under construction. So it's very key to that proposal. So as we begin the conversation of, of looking at the various options, we did initial feasibility analysis and optimizing and reinforcing the existing transit network. We wanted to focus on efficient and cost-effective solutions. And what I mean by cost-effective solutions, how will that impact us on the long-term in operations and make sure that we have a system that's efficient for our bus routing? We want to integrate into existing and enhancing the area development and maximize the use of the real estate, but build upon our existing transit objectives like the Envision My Ride effort. We've looked at numerous options in the, those early phases looking at uh, options that use both blocks across 4th Street, but also using the singular block. And that analysis focused on the connectivity of all the routes that would come into Uptown. We did an operational analysis to understand the turning movements and how, how would we navigate uh, a new transit facility with you know, a potential new street network and, and new types of bus modes. And we looked at uh, traffic around the street and look at the understanding like the impact to, to transit, you know, increase of transit service on the streets that are already having an increasing uh, traffic congestion. And so through that feasibility analysis, we narrowed it down to, to three options on the screen that you see here, a street level option where we would be at the same level of the transit center like it is today, an option that we're calling a terrace option, which would be at the level above grade, at the level of the Lynx Blue Line, and then a just below street level option that we're calling the concourse. And what's key to note, each of these are, uh, would be incorporated within a mixed use development. So as we sought to, to begin the evaluation of those three options to start narrowing down the, the design goals, we wanted to look at how they would best meet the goals that I talked about earlier, that we would have a passenger first design approach, reduce bus route circulation on surrounding streets to simplify our operation needs, incorporate public and stakeholder input, and maximize development potential. So in this initial, this initial analysis, we looked at you know, on the street level, certainly uh, from a pros, very accessible from the street level. It does reduce the number of driveways and has a simple access to the Lynx Blue Line, but we still continue to have that pedestrian conflict inside the facility, but also in the street where the buses are coming in and out. Uh, and then also re retain some driveway conflicts on Trade Street. Uh, so we recommended that we eliminate this as an option due to the lack of secure ac access. This site would be more difficult to, to create a secure uh, single point of contact and we would have lack of climate control space. And then the bus movements would conflict with the land use and mobility goals along Bavard and Trade Street. The terrace option, positives, central bus terminal, one-way bus circulation. You know, we could fully secure that bus transfer area and it had a good connection to the, to the light rail. But what's key about this proposal, why we did not work out and why we ultimately recommended to refine it, 
the temporary bus facility would need to be located on Brevard Street. And so that would put our bus passengers you know, up against a ongoing construction project with, with the future facility. So the recommendation for this option was to refine it, to get it to a single block, and so that we could utilize that parcel across 4th Street for the temporary transit center. So for the concourse op option, uh, it, we feel like this gave us the best option for a fully secured bus transfer area. It eliminated all those conflicts for pedestrian buses, uh, but it did require additional bus circulation time within the, the transit center. And it did have that driveway conflict with Trade Street. And so what we ended up recommending for this was to refine this option to maximize the bus bay potential, reduce some of that bus movement on surrounding streets and limit that driveway conflict on Trade Street. So with that initial evaluation, we recommended to eliminate street level, refine the terrace option and advance the concourse option. So through this next phase of design review, we're having an independent assessment by the city consultant team of AECOM, Kittleson Associates and Dedelius. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on the AECOM proposals to look at this high level evaluation based on our available information to focus on the service and operations, safety and security, efficiency and congestion, economic development, but also environmental considerations and minimize the impacts of the natural and human environment. And since this development is now uh, in court, has a raise, federal raise grant, so we have, uh, have been awarded funding from the federal government to participate in the construction of this facility, we do have to go through a process called NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act, to conduct an environmental review of this site. And through this, this evaluation phase, we will select a single option called a locally preferred alternative for the purposes of going through that NEPA effort. So as I stated before, we recommended to uh, refine the two level, the, the terrace option. And what we came up with was a two level option. So having a, a level at the street level, but also a level at the blue line. And this, is, this option that you're seeing on the screen now is the street level option. So four street is one way, you would be able to go right in and right out of that blow level with six bus bays, a pedestrian entrance on Trey Street. So it did eliminate all conflicts on uh, Trade Street. Then on the, the uh, light rail level, there would, we, we would try to have a ramp from Third Street connecting through the adjoining par the parcels across the street going over Fourth Street to get to the elevated option to access the bus bays there. Uh, and But with the complications with this option is it would require uh, up and down movement by our passengers to transfer between bus. So it was a negative on this option that you didn't have that single point of transfer because uh, you have two levels of platform. Also creates a much more uh, complicated routing because we would essentially have to have two sets of routes to access facility. So there were some negatives, but it did get us into that one block based upon the original option, which was going across two blocks. Here is a kind of a trade street view of that option. As you can see here, the two different levels, one at street and one at the links blue line level. So this initial, this analysis conducted by our independent review that cert certainly transfer between bus routes would be challenging with, with this option. It does, however, it does have a more a higher amount of natural lighting since it's, it's up at the street level and at the blue line level. But we feel like this would be a little bit more difficult to have a less climate control space and a very complicated routing would, would cost us more on the operations side. Uh, economic development potential, uh, it, the integration can be achieved with this, but it would be less efficient from a uh, development standpoint. And then based upon high level NEPA screening, there's a low potential for negative human and natural resource impacts. So the concourse option, you know, as a went, you know, if, if you recall, we wanted to uh, refine this option and, and advance it to a higher level. Uh, what you see here would be the street level of this and what the arrows on the screen indicate the ramping that would be required to get to the concourse level of this option. So you would have uh, in and out on 4th Street to go to the facility and then to come back up to street level. There would be a right in and right out on Trade Street. So still one, a single driveway, but it would not be uh, coming in both directions on Trade Street. But the primary focus of the access to this site would be on 4th Street. And you would have two pedestrian connections into the facility from 4th Street, but also to CTC. And that's key on the next slide. You can see that would enable a much more secure location by limiting the, the points of, of contact 
Uh, this is at the concourse level, and there would be a circular uh, movement to access the bays along here. And then what you're also seeing is a part of this development also include our ticketing and other uh, options that we need for, for uh, operator restrooms and operator like uh, break rooms. Both of the options would have those as well. This is a similar view uh, facing Trade Street, uh, where you see concourse there on the on, on the this image. That's where you, you would have the, the pedestrian inches from Trade Street. And then you would have access from the from the street level uh, going to the, the blue line, but you would also have elevator and other access from that concourse level up to the Lynx Blue Line. So our, our analysis that we conducted through our independent review that this really does provide the best transfer between bus routes in a single uh, climate controlled space. Uh, the single platform would be more secure and would reduce the pedestrian and conflicts. And from a just a basic bus routing standpoint, having a single point, single point to go in and out does provide that. It would maximize integration with the mixed use development, similar to the other option it, from the high level NEPA screen, low potential for negative human or natural resource impacts. But we do recognize that through the design process, we careful attention to air quality and natural lighting will need to be addressed. But we feel that particularly on the air quality side that will be mitigated by the electrification of our bus fleet. So as we kind of zoom out and kind of look, what are the key like differences between the two options? Natural light is an obvious one, one's above and one's more integrated at the concourse level. So the two level terrace would have more of that natural light, but we feel like through design opportunities, there may be ways to bring more natural light to the concourse option. There is a bit more operational flexibility with the concourse option versus the two level option terrace. Uh, both have some level of secure climate controlled space, but we feel the concourse would have more. And ultimately they both would improve, you know, the passenger experience from the current Charlotte Transportation Center. But that passenger experience from a single transfer platform would be uh, better and more prioritized on the concourse option. So with our public outreach, we want to hear what the public thinks about these options. We've done the technical analysis, but we need to hear from the public. We've been doing pop-up meetings last week to ask our passengers, what do you want in a new transit center? How important is transfer in Uptown? We have our virtual public meetings today. We have an in-person meeting uh, at Charlotte Mecklenburg Government Center on the 13th, Thursday of this week. And then we'll have our pop-ups with these same design options at the Charlotte Transportation Center next week. What have we heard thus far with our outreach last week? We asked our customers not about the design options, but what do you want to see improvements in, in a new transit center? And we certainly heard they want to, of course, continue to have shelter from inclement weather, but also better wayfinding, more technology, better digital schedules, and create easier transfers. When we did ask the, 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 our public riding community about would it make their trip easier if they transferred outside of Uptown, and the majority of our participants actually indicated a preference for coming to Uptown to make that transfer. But they also feel that their safety is compromised by traveling across those bus travel lanes inside the facility. So creating a single point of transfer was, we feel was an important element to include in any new transit center development. So as we move forward, we'll be asking the public a series of design option questions. Which option provides greater ease of transfer between bus to bus and bus to rail? Which one creates more opportunities for a climate controlled space? Which one reduces the pedestrian conflicts better and creates more opportunities for more security and at the end of the day, which option provides the overall the best passenger experience because this facility will be in place for some time. So we want to make sure that we're providing the best passenger experience for today, but also into the future. Just to refresh, this is the project timeline, very early in the process for this. So lots of opportunity for the public to, to inform and help us with the design of this new facility. Uh, we will be back in front of the Charlotte City Council as well as the Metropolitan Commission throughout uh, November and October. And then we uh, will put here and we'll include it in the chat. Uh, you can uh, send comments to our CTC redevelopment at publicinput.com. Of course, you can always call 704-336-RIDE-7433 to give direct feedback. Uh, at the conclusion of our um, Meetings on the 13th, we'll have more information online of how to fill out and answer many of those questions, but you certainly can give comment directly today with what we have here on the screen. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions.
We've gotten a few questions in the chat. Jason, I'll go ahead and ask those if you want to address them. And if anyone watching has any other questions or comments, please go ahead and put those in the chat now. First question is, would you say Denver is a good example of the underground transit center? I would say the, the Denver is an example of a facility that's just below street level. Uh, it's very different though, compared to here, that site, that, that transit center is roughly about a thousand feet long. So that's multiple blocks in, in the context of Uptown Charlotte. It has a park setting above it. It's not completely, it's in, in the general area as part of the Union Station development. So yes, there's a kind of a broader redevelopment at that location, but the facility itself is not completely integrated vertically uh, with a, a mixed use development. Now from a transit experience, it has kind of more of a concourse like um, kind of waiting area. It, it is climate controlled. Uh, so it, it is an example of a facility like this, but it's not completely comparable to what we're trying to do here. Thank you. Our next question is, could you address the three car light rail train situation? People are fed up with the crowded trains. You need three car trains to run on the line or at least three or at least test three car trains. Great question. So just a little bit of context here. The original league's blue line opened with only the ability to serve two car trains. Uh, the blue line extension was built to accommodate three car trains. And so the limiting factor for us is the, the uh, platforms on the blue line, the original blue line that have two car trains. We had originally proposed to do three car trains, but in the conversation with our federal funding partners, there was a, a, a um, not understanding of what our, the, our ridership potential would be at the time. And we certainly have outperformed those initial estimates. And so we did reduce that at the time, but we quickly realized that we need to go back and expand those platforms. And we have done that for four of the 15 links blue line stations, uh, CTC and third in the context of, of this development are only two car platforms. And so we, are, we realized that we need to make sure that as we are designing this, that we need to, to move up the design of those three car platforms with this development and seek funding opportunities to ensure that we can time it right uh, with this redevelopment. So certainly we, we recognize that as a need uh, and we do wanna make sure that we're being proactive with the design of that in the context of this development. Thank you. Our next question is, will there be rail trail improvements on that side of the light rail? Yeah, so the, the rail trail is one of our single greatest access, access um, uh, greatest opportunities along the, the Lynx Blue Line. And so we want to ensure that that is also a part of this, this development. And so uh, rail trail consideration and improvements of the rail trail will be a part of this development. Next question, do any of the designs incorporate secured covered bicycle parking? If not, is that something that could be considered? That's a great question. Uh, we will take that back to the design team and see where those opportunities exist. Uh, you know, we do have the rack and ride program where you can take your your um, your bikes onto these buses. When we were doing the design of the of the bus turning movements, we had to ensure that the turning movements also included where the bike the bike rack was down. And so this design does assume that there will be bikes in this facility. And so we can add that as the as one of the things that we'll need to look at as far as uh, an amenity for our passengers. Will, when will the Gold Line streetcar be extended? So the, the current uh, Gold Line runs from Johnson C. Smith University over to Sunnyside Avenue in the Plaza Midwood community, Plaza Midwood Elizabeth community for four miles. There is a remaining six miles of the project, two miles to the Rosa Parks Transit Center off of Bayes Ford Road and then uh, additional four miles out Central Avenue to the Eastland Community Transit Center. Uh, that's what we're calling phase three of the project. And we're currently updating the environmental uh, design and study of those, of those. And then we'll be doing uh, additional refinements of that. We don't have a, a date at this point, but the most important thing is to get the design update, update the environmental documents so that we're ready for federal funding when that opportunities come available to us. When will you get a new fleet of light rail trains? So we are uh, getting close to what's called the midlife overhaul for, for some of our trains. Some of our trains are probably almost you know, 15 years old at this point. And so we're, we'll continue to, to bring new fleet on as, as the years go by, but we'll also be can continue to update and upgrade our, our fleets uh, as they reach their midlife overhaul. 
When will you change the train announcements for the trains? So if I understand the, the question, we uh, if there's a, a particular announcement that needs to be updated, we can look into that. Uh, but we typically make changes to announcements uh, during our service changes, which occur three times a year in the October timeframe, February and June. But if there's something that needs to be updated now, we can certainly uh, address that if you have something in particular. Sorry if you hear my son. What year will the rail trail bridge open? The rail trail, I don't have that information. I believe you're referring to the rail trail bridge across, across uh, the John Bilk Freeway on I-277. I uh, that's uh, being built through a public-private partnership with the city and stakeholders in the uptown area. I don't have a date for that at this moment, but we can uh, make sure that we post that um, uh, as a part of our update. Okay, will passengers have indoor seating during inclement weather? So uh, both options would have cover from inclement weather and there will be seating uh, incorporated into the design of the facility. Would the new CTC be able to access or connect to the new epicenter development? Uh, there's already a connection today that connects the Lynx Blue Line to the epicenter development. Uh, so as you know, they uh, do their redevelopment or, or upgrade that, that development, that we would coordinate with that because we certainly would, would want to maintain that existing connection. That's all the questions I'm seeing in the chat right now. If anyone else has a question or a comment, please go ahead and post that in the next couple of minutes and Jason can address those. If you have any questions or comments after the meeting, please join a future public meeting or email the email address that's in the chat or call our customer service. Jason, we've got two more questions. When will the Silver Line open or start construction? Uh, so currently the Silver Line is in the early stages of its design refinement. Uh, we're looking at uh, additional opportunities in our, in our uptown uh, with the Silver Line alignment. Um, we have an adopted phasing strategy with that that was adopted by MTC earlier this year with the, the phase A being the Southeast portion to Matthews and phase B going out to, to the airport. Uh, unfortunately, at this moment, I don't have the exact time for that. So much of that it would be hinged upon the ability to secure local funding, but and also be competitive and, and win federal funding, just like we did for, for the, the Lynx Blue Line. But we can post that information in the, the questions later. There will be public engagement meetings for Silver Line on November 1st and 2nd, and we'll post more information about that on our website. Next question, will the app include rail arrival time? Well, actually, our current Cats Pass app has rail arrival time in it now. So if you go to, to our Cats, the Cats Pass app on the Google Play or Apple Store and download that, you can see when buses will arrive in real time, the gold line in real time, and also the Lynx Blue Line in real time. But we will have in this facility signage that also indicates arrival time for the various uh, transit modes that would serve this facility. Thank you. That was it in the chat. We'll give people a couple of more minutes to see if they want to ask anything else. Oh, can you post frequency times out at each gold line station? So I think what the, the question is referring to is the uh, if we had more digital signage to show arrival times at the Gold Line stations, uh, that's something we can take back to the design team and see what opportunities could exist uh, for that. But I will urge people that you know the the Cats Pass app will also show you those arrival times.
we'll give a couple more minutes to see if there are any other questions or comments in the chat. Otherwise, I did put the email address and the customer service phone number in the chat if you have any questions or comments after this meeting has ended. Would the new CTC station have wayfinding outside of the actual station? Absolutely. I think that's a key point to understand where you enter. Uh, I think uh, we'll also have, you know, signage, digital signage as well. Wayfinding will be very key to understand like where you enter and where also you can access the various modes. So yes, certainly there'll be a wayfinding signage outside the facility. We'll give another minute or so for anyone to add any questions or comments to the chat before we end the meeting. Thank you everyone for joining in the chat. I did link the CTC redevelopment project page, which also has um, upcoming public meeting dates. If you want to attend another meeting, we did just get one more question, Jason. Okay. What options will disabled passengers with, what options will disabled or passengers with strollers have if the elevators break down? So we will have to certainly be a fully accessible ADA, except, you know, fully accessible facility. And so we'll, we'll, we will evaluate like mitigation options if something like that were to occur. And so I would just encourage to continue to be a part of that involvement. And we're still in the early fa phase of that. But yeah, certainly that's uh, a piece that we'll have to consider is to have backup strategies if uh, elements like elevators or escalators go out of service. There are no more questions or comments. We'll go ahead and end this live stream. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Logan. Thank you all for joining. Please uh, keep an eye out for our future public involvement for this effort. Thank you very much.